This is section five on data collection, chapter one from the Stats and Mechanics Year One book, and it's on the large data set. Now, this is a section that just gets neglected. Students don't bother with it, probably don't understand it, look at the spreadsheet and think, hang on, there's loads and loads of data here. It doesn't make any sense. Um, there's a huge spreadsheet, don't know what's going on. So what we're going to do here is try and summarize what's going on in the large data set. So the large data set is basically, uh, there's a huge spreadsheet. It's got loads of data and the data concerns weather information from uh, particular locations. Now, first of all, the uh, data it was recorded basically in only two years, May and October from 1987 and May and October in 2015. So no other um, years recorded, no other months recorded outside of those. So you just need to remember May to October in 1987 and May to October in 2015. So if you get a question that says something like, uh, you know, um, they want to collect data in January, well, you can say, well, you know, that we don't have that data because it only goes between May and October. Right, what data is collected? Well, Data is collected about the te temperature over 24 hours or the mean temperature over 24 hours, the total amount of rainfall, um, so total rainfall over um, sort of 24 hour uh, period. Now, the one thing that you need to know about rainfall, if there isn't, if there isn't enough rainfall, then what you'll find in the cell, it's recorded as TR. And you just need to know, well, if I see TR in a cell, it means that there's less than 0.05 millimeters of uh, rain, and the TR just stands for trace. So it's such a small amount, it's not worth bothering about. And then the total amount of sunshine over a 24 hour period, so let's just highlight that total amount of sunshine. This is to the nearest tenth of an hour. And also the average wind direction. You'll know that wind direction changes from one direction to another. But we're saying, well, what was the average wind direction and the wind speed? And the direction is given as a bearing. And the speed is measured on the what we call the, the uh, Beaufort scale. And you can see that scale here. OK, so just familiarize yourself with that scale. This is what the speed of um, or the wind speed is measured in. Now, that's for all the locations. Yeah, you'll get all of that data. Now, which locations before we move on to uh, what's just recorded for the uh, UK? Well, uh, well, what's recorded in addition for the UK? So what locations do we have? Well, we have Jacksonville, which is in Florida, in America. And that place tends to be hot and humid. We also have Beijing, which is a city in China, which also tends to be hot and humid. Not always, but what it tends to be. And then... Another place in Perth, not in Perth, in Australia, a town called Perth, and that tends to be hot and dry. Yeah, so similar types of weather conditions in Jacksonville and, and Beijing. Uh, hot weather, but um, not, not humid in Perth, Australia. And if you know a little bit about geography, you'll be able to know why you get those uh, certain weather conditions. Now, the UK has its own extra information as well as the information that was given above. So you've got all of this, plus you've got some other stuff as well. Now, what other stuff do we have for the UK? Well, we get the daily mean gust. So you'll notice that when it's windy, uh, sometimes you get like a gust of wind. It's like... A bit of like a like a bit of powerful wind just for a few seconds and then it 
um, it sort of goes back to normal again and that's measured in knots and the conversion between miles an hour and, and uh, knots is given here so you get the mean gusts for the UK what else do you get for the UK uh, humidity we also get for the UK here daily maximum relative humidity okay so we get that as well um, it says in the brackets there that if the humidity is over 95 percent you tend to get mist and fog in the UK because of its cooler temperature also for the UK we get the average or the mean cloud cover and it's measured in octas and our octa is one eighth of the, the sky measured in cloud we also get the day daily mean visibility okay that's basically how far can you see on a, on a given day and I suppose if it's clear and sunny and not um, cloudy or anything like that or misty you'll be able to see a long way and that's measured in decameters and a decameter is 10 meters so I'll just put that down here a decameter is 10 meters so this basically measure, is measuring how far you can see um, what was the average visibility and also for the UK we get the um, daily mean pressure so what was the average pressure for the day and that's measured in hectopascals now you may know a little bit about high and low pressure and the causes that that has on the uh, weather uh, typically I mean I'm not a geography teacher but from what I've seen of weather forecasts low pressure and I think that's below a thousand so less than a thousand hectopascals that usually brings unsettled wet weather so unsettled wet weather okay at any time of the year whereas high pressure which I believe is over a thousand hectopascals uh, normally brings settled dry weather yeah now I'm not talking about the temperature because in in the winter high pressure the temperature can actually be quite cold right now let's look at the UK location so the UK locations are Heathrow, Hearn and Camborne now these places are in the south of the UK they'll probably have similar weather okay so similar weather and we would expect it to be um, maybe warm and dry in the summer and cooler and wet in the uh, in in the in the winter okay then we've got this place called Li Ming here so I'm guessing it's because it's between this location this location we're going to get different type of weather to what we get up here in Lucas, I'm guessing that's how you you spell it up in Scotland. So the weather here is going to be very different to what it's going to be down in the south. Okay, so here I think it's probably going to be cooler than it is in the south. Here this is going to be somewhere in the middle in terms of weather. Here we're going to get the the more the milder weather yeah so you know there may be a correlation in, the, in maybe the type of weather in Heathrow, Hearn and Cranbourne but I wouldn't expect to see the same type of correlation in Leeming or Lecars in Scotland okay so just be aware where those locations are where you'd expect to see correlation what type of weather you would get and obviously the UK weather is going to be very different to Ber Perth, Jacksonville and Beijing yeah 
So here we've got um, an extract from the large data set and any question to do with a large data set will always give you like uh, the, the bit that you need. You don't need to memorize it. Uh, so remember, if you see TR in a, and it will be a rainfall cell, that means that there's been less than 0.05 millimeters of rainfall. And if you see NA in a cell, it means for whatever reason that data wasn't available. So data not available. Oh, it's missing. Right, okay, look at the type of data represented by the total daily rainfall. So total daily rainfall is this column here. Okay, uh, it's numerical data and it's continuous as well. So it's, you could say it's continuous data and it's also um, data which is a quantity. So it's quantitative data. as opposed to qualitative data, um, which you have when it's a description. So for example, um, this column here, the wind speed, and it's a Beaufort conversion. So it's changed from a number to uh, a, a wordy description. So that would be uh, qualitative data when you've got a description. Okay, back to the question, part B. Alison is investigating the daily maximum gust, which you only get in the UK. She wants to select a sample um, of size five from the first 20 days in Hearn um, in June 2000, uh, sorry, 1987. She wants to use the first two digits of the day as a sampling frame and generates five random numbers between one and 20. Describe the type of sample method that Alison has used. Now, since she's generating random numbers, there's nothing systematic about it. Um, it's completely random. So it's going to be a random sample or random sampling. Okay, so nothing more than that. Part C. Explain why Allison's prone process might not generate a sample of five. OK, so let's look at the column of data um, that she wants to use. And she, this is the da maximum daily gust. So um, that's the last column, which is this one here. OK, and what she's doing, she's using random numbers and using those random numbers take and use those as the first two digits of the date um, so actually what she's going to be doing is using these numbers here you can see they go between 1 and 20 and she's going to be generating five random numbers now I notice that there are two days that have got NA in them and it's possible she could select her five random numbers and one of them could be this one and one of them could be this one. You know, that's possible. She could pick her five random numbers, may give her one, two, three, four, five. And then these two happen to be the ones that are not available. So it's, it's possible that she may not be, uh, be able to get, um, uh, a sample of five because two of the cells have got an A in it. Okay, so I'll just run it down. Okay, so um, she may not be able to get a full sample of five of five since two of the cells or data. Uh, contain NA not available. 
Right, okay, part A. We want the daily mean uh, temperature for the first five days in June, which is these, uh, for the daily mean temperature, which is here. You want to find the mean of those. So since it's a sample, we should use this symbol to show it's a sample. 15.1, so I'll add those all together. And we'll divide by five. Now when I add those up, I get 70. That's 14. And the units, degrees Celsius. Part B is about calculating the daily, uh, the median, so a different average, um, for the 14th to the 20th of June. So that's these here. And it's the median for the daily total rainfall, which is this column here. And notice it includes one that says trace. We still include that. So trace is like, like zero, basically, isn't it? Or it's, well, it, there was some rain, but it was very low. All right. I should know how to find a median. So a median is the, got to put the numbers in order of size. So we've done that one and that one. So there's another zero. Zero point one. Then 3.7, 5.6, and 7.4. Let's cross the numbers until we get those in the middle number. So cross off those two, cross off those two, cross off that one, cross off that one. Okay, so I'm left with 0 0.1 in the middle. So the median is 0.1 and the units are millimeters. Part C. Uh, the daily, the median daily temperature rainfall for the same week in Perth was 19 millimeters, 19.0 millimeters. Carl states that more southerly countries experience uh, higher rainfall during June. State with a reason whether your answer to part B supports this statement. Okay, well, in this sample, it seems to support Carl's statement. Carl's statement. However, his sample is small. It's actually very small. Okay. Well, how many days did he sample? Um, seven. Seven days. And even one of those was trace, including uh, one trace day. I suppose that doesn't really make much difference. And um, the weather in Perth is normally hot and dry, okay, much drier than the UK, okay, and um, we could um, probably talk about the seasons as well that um, in Perth it's their winter that's sort of relative really because winter in Australia is not like the winter in the UK so maybe we would expect more rain possibly but that doesn't prove it. A sample of five days, you could come up with any sort of um, conclusion you like, really, with a much bigger sample than that. 
Right, we should now do exercise 1e on pages 13 to 15.